Coming up today, the International Monetary Fund promotes China's yuan to its elite basket of currencies. Korea's parliament ratifies the Korea-China Free Trade Agreement after sweeteners are given to the nation's agriculture and fishing sectors, which are expected to take a hit from the pact. First addressing world leaders at the climate summit in Paris, President Park and hae calls for serious efforts to launch a new deal on tackling climate change, saying failure is not an option. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6am on Tuesday, December 1st here in Seoul. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning in a decision of huge global significance. China's currency, the yuan, will enter the elite league after it got the green light from the International Monetary Fund to join its basket of reserve currencies. The IMF's executive board voted on Monday in favour of allowing the yuan to join the benchmark foreign exchange basket known as Special Drawing Rights, or SDR. The IMF says the Chinese currency met all existing criteria and effective October 1st next year, the yuan will be included in the SDR basket as a fifth currency, along with the US dollar, euro, British pound and Japanese yen. The yuan will represent approximately 11% of the reserve basket above both the pound and yen, which will each make up around 8%. The dollar will remain as the predominant SDR currency, representing about 41% of the basket. It marks the first time an additional currency has been added to the SDR basket in 35 years. Staying with economic news, Korea's National Assembly has ratified the Korea-China Free Trade Agreement. The massive trade pact could now come into effect before the year is out. The agreement will open up more of China's gigantic market to South Korean firms. Our National Assembly correspondent Park Ji-won reports. The Korea-China Free Trade Pact was finally ratified by Parliament on the last day of November, along with FDAs with Vietnam and New Zealand, and a bill to create a free trade zone with Turkey in the service and investment sectors. Parliamentary approval of the Korea-China FDA did not come easily. Rebel parties held sessions of marathon negotiations over the weekend, and it was only after each party got approval from their own lawmakers on Monday morning were they able to give trade pact the green light. I hope the ratification of the Korea-China FTA and other FTAs will provide good opportunities for Korea's exporters during a time when the volume of exports is dwindling down. Korea is an open economy with a high level of dependence on trade, so we cannot help but actively engage in signing FTAs. But we need to make sure the specific details of FTAs fit Korea's national interests and make up for sectors that may suffer damage from the pacts. The Liberal Party earlier said they wouldn't support the trade agreement until a reasonable amount of compensation was made available for the nation's farming and fishing industries. So both parties agreed to create a fund worth about 1 billion U.S. dollars in addition to 1.5 billion dollars worth of compensation measures for the nation's agricultural and fisheries sectors. The ruling party and the government pushed up the ratification process to have the FDA take effect within this year. Now it needs to be approved in a cabinet meeting before it's officially proclaimed into law. The Korean government will then give notice to the Chinese government that domestic procedures are complete, after which the State Council of China is slated to approve the pact. The two countries have not set a start date, as the Chinese government has yet to promulgate the pact. Experts are now saying that China's domestic procedures will decide exactly when the mega-trade pact comes into effect. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. So what's the economic impact of this mega trade deal for Korea? If the pact uh, takes effect before the end of the year, the benefits could be almost instanta instantaneous, with tariffs being reduced on a sliding scale over the next 20 years. Uh, this has many businesses licking their lips, of course, but not everyone is happy. Kim Min-ji reports. 
Over the next 10 years, the Korea-China FTA is expected to boost Korea's real GDP by almost 1 percent and create over 53-thousand new jobs. The government will work closely with China and modify related rules for the trade deal to take effect this year. If this happens, tariffs will immediately be cut the day it takes effect and again on January 1st. Under the deal, Seoul will eliminate import tariffs on 79 percent of all products from China within a decade, while Beijing will do the same on 71 percent of all products from Korea. In 20 years, duties will be removed on over 90 percent of all goods. That translates to over 5 billion U.S. dollars less in tariffs paid by exporters every year. Korea's free trade agreement with its largest trading partner, China, is expected to provide new momentum for local exports that have fallen every month this year. The FTA is expected to boost annual bilateral trade between the countries to more than $300 billion, up nearly 40 percent from 2012. In addition, the deal will give Korea price competitiveness over rivals in China's huge consumer market. Korea's early advancement to the Chinese market uh, earlier than our competitors, such as Australia, United States and other countries, is critical for Korea's long-term success in the Chinese market. Like many other trade deals, the agriculture sector has been a sticking point. But experts say the level of liberalization for the agrofishery sector is lower compared to Korea's other FTAs. Korea was able to protect highly sensitive products, including rice. There's going to be damage to some sectors, but we can't say it's entirely because of the FTA. The government says the further opening of China could actually give Korea's agriculture sector more opportunity to make inroads into the Chinese market. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Now, President Park Geun-hye and scores of world leaders are in Paris for the UN Climate Change Conference. This year, the leaders are working on launching a new global climate system. Our presidential office correspondent Hwang sang -hee reports. President Park called for collective international efforts for a new deal on tackling climate change. Addressing some 140 heads of state at the opening session of the UN Climate Change Conference in Paris on Monday, President Park reiterated South Korea's goal to slash greenhouse gas emissions by 37 percent by 2030. Over 160 countries, which account for 90 percent of global emissions, have put forward their climate targets for post-2020. President Park said Seoul will reach its goal by fostering a new energy industry. Part of the plan is making zero energy buildings obligatory step by step and making the resort island of Jeju a carbon-free island. This means Jeju Island will only run on renewable energy and there will only be electric cars on its roads. By doing that, President Park said Korea will create a new market worth 100 billion U.S. dollars by 2030 and make 500,000 jobs. As an end product of this year's global climate talks, world leaders are aiming to achieve a successor treaty to the 1997 Kyoto Protocol, which expires in 2020. On Tuesday, President Park will give a special speech at the UNESCO headquarters, becoming the first South Korean leader to do so. She will then leave for Prague for a summit with the Visegrad Group, which is composed of the Czech Republic, Hungary, Slovakia and Poland. Hwang sang Arirang News, Paris. Now on the sidelines of the Paris Climate Summit, the world's two biggest polluters, the United States and China, have renewed their commitment to slash greenhouse gas emissions. Meeting on Monday, U.S. President Barack Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping reaffirmed the pledges they made last year to reduce pollution. Obama said both countries were determined to take action. Now, the two leaders also discussed a range of other issues. They talked about the fight against Islamic State terrorism, cyber security and peaceful resolution of maritime disputes in the South China Sea. Presidents Obama and Xi also renewed their commitment to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Turkey has arrested 1,300 asylum seekers, a matter of hours after it struck a multi-billion dollar deal with the European Union to stem the inflow of refugees into Europe. Reports from numerous sources say hundreds of Syrians, Afghans, Iranians and Iraqis and three people smugglers were caught in a rural part of Turkey just north of the Greek island of Lesbos. The small Greek island has struggled to provide medical care to refugees who have been arriving by the thousand 
every day for well over a year. The latest sweep is believed to be Turkey's largest single mass arrest of refugees in months. It came less than 24 hours after the EU pledged to give Turkey 3.2 billion US dollars in exchange for increased border patrols. Now, South Korea's spy agency says it has reason to believe that North Korean leader Kim Jong un was present for the regime's botched attempt to test fire a submarine launched ballistic missile last weekend. Our Defence Ministry correspondent Kim Hyun bin reports. South Korea's National Intelligence Service told lawmakers on Monday that North Korea test fired an SOBM on Saturday off the east coast city of Wonsan. But they added the launch is viewed as a failure as the missile's trajectory could not be traced. That's according to head of the Parliamentary Intelligence Committee, Chu Hoyong, after being briefed by the NIS. The intel indicates Pyongyang has yet to master its sought-after missile technology. The agency added that the North's leader, Kim Jong-un, is presumed to have watched over the failed launch. South Korea's defense ministry says Seoul and Washington are closely watching North Korea's test launches, adding that the recent launch contravenes UN Security Council resolutions. UN Security Council resolutions prohibit any type of ballistic missile development or launch by North Korea, and Seoul and Washington are closely watching Pyongyang's movements. In May, North Korea claimed it had successfully launched an SOBM, but analysts say that the test was more of an injection than a launch as it only flew about 150 meters. The nation's intelligence agency said they were able to trace the path of the trajectory at that time. Pyongyang's test fire over the weekend comes a little more than a week before the two Koreas are set to hold vice ministerial talks at a jointly run industrial park in the North Korean city of Kaesong on December 11th. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Now, ancient metal type has been discovered inside an old palace in the North Korean border town of Kaesong. A team of South Korean historians told reporters on Monday that they uncovered more than 3,500 ancient relics over six months at the Manwal Pavilion in the north. The historians believe the metal is the most notable discovery. The metal likely dates back to the Goryeo era either in the 12th or 13th century. The historians say metal type from this era is important national heritage and the fact that it was found inside the Manwal Pavilion makes it even more valuable. The inter-Korean excavation project was launched in 2007 but it stopped and started several times because of tensions between Seoul and Pyongyang. Korean pop singer Sai is back after more than three years with his seventh album. It's titled Chiljip Saida. The singer, best known for his hit song Kangnam Style, held a news conference in Seoul on Monday ahead of the release. During the conference, Sai admitted the success of his 2012 mega hit Kangnam Style had become a heavy burden and said other, another success like Kangnam Style will not happen to him again. Now, the two lead tracks of the latest album are Napal Baji or Bell Bottoms, that's the video you're watching now. Uh, it's a retro funk song, as you can see. And there's another one called Daddy. It's a fans, uh, fast dance track featuring K-pop star CL of 21. The video for Kangnam Style has racked up close to 2.5 billion views on YouTube, and its horse riding dance has become imitated by millions around the world. Now, Arirang TV, the station you're watching right now and Korea's only public English channel, has signed an MOU with French broadcasting station France 24. The CEO and president of Arirang TV, Bang Sok Ho, met with Marie-Christine Zaragoz, the head of the French holding company that runs France 24 in Paris on Monday, to ink the agreement. Under the MOU, the two channels will share content and produce a number of programmes that will help promote diplomatic ties between Korea and France. The deal follows an agreement between President Park and Hay and a French counterpart, Francois Hollande, that was reached at a summit in Seoul last month. It also comes in time for the Korea-France year, which marks the 130th anniversary of bilateral ties between the two countries.
Well, that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. And we'll be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Goodbye.